Сега наш гост и аз много се радвам, че Людмила прията е на Кана да направи този доклад на семинара на Международния център. И сега в доклад, че повечето хора я познават, но все пак тук съм си взел и нейното CV, а и едно много интересно интервю, което от 2018 година ние сме почели, стана известно това интервю в Notices. Да. И аз съм взел и препоръчвам на хората, които са тук, да го прочитат това интервю, защото оттам ще добият здравейство. Оттам ще добият представа за Людмилка в един контекст, който е и научен, но и обществен, защото се оказва, че тя това интервю, аз не знам, не възглава по повод не математически май направено. И той е възглав, че тя става играч на годината по брич на Лон Тайланд. Така че виждате какво става с силните математици. Са добри по всичко казване. Така че Людмила с две думи, ако трябва да кажа, тя е продукт на, ако си съгласна, на българската система за равно кримини развитие на талант, дали да го кажем на този стил. Тя е олегрис, тя е продукт на софийската математическа гимназия. Не е научителка, тогава беше Румян Караджова, беше не е научителка, а пък аз имах така щастието и удоволствие и как да кажа, и всичко останало, защото бех ръководител тогава на Националния отбор по математика, бяхме заедно с нея в Индия вече, в Индия, където тя сребре не дава, мисля, че получи. Имаме една интересна история, да, ама са не бъде разказвам. После ще и казвам, да питам дали е вярно това, което знам. Математическо е, не е нещо такова. Сега, по-натам Людмила, тя, така да се каже, не е ние пръв научен ръководител, ако мога така да се изразя, тя много активно работеше тук с Васко Цанов, с Васил. А след това, значи тя отиде в МНТ, не е научен ръководител на PhD, но беше геометър от калибър на Гатя. И след това, след това тя, така се каже, е свързан нейния път с Тони Бруд. И тя има едно много такова, много удоборно и много успешно се трудят често с, аз ще кажа, Миша Гърбицки, защото геометрите в България го познава много добре Миша. Сега, тя самата тук ще ни разкаже неща, които гледна в точка на геометрията, на гиперкедровите многообразия са интересни и други неща, но това, което тя и в интервюто го споменава на въпроса на... Той не е журналист, ами не знам който го трябва от този лопес, не знам. Ага, той е заместник директор или заместник директор на Нотисис. А, да. Така. Та той я пита, кой е резултат на един така и е любим или така тя обича най-много или да рече така тачи най-много в този смисъл да кажа. И това е и не е ново, но това е така запасото на една хипотеза на Баяши. Тя някъде, съм се и шеста година, доколко ти се спомням, казваш. Която ти тезата е, че псевдометриката на Кобеяши е нула, т.е. тя е нулева, за катърско партии. Но те доказват не само тази хипотеза, ами и по-общи резултати, когато става дума за хиперкелеви номерации, но нека ми дам на нея думата, защото тя е изключителен професионал в тази насока, така че не убила към за Кобеяши. Thank you so much for this introduction. And this is the very nice being back in the video. So, even though this is one of my favorite results, 
So um, today uh, I go, I'm going to speak about uh, finding these results of the uh, information types of uh, hypergalar manifolds. Uh, even a technical model of 
or um, discovery scattered scale manifolds have such nice properties, a higher dimensional hyper scale manifolds cannot possibly exist. Uh, but they do exist. So um, in the early uh, 80s, maybe in 82, um, Bouville and then Fujiki uh, discovered some um, hyper uh, examples. Uh, for example, a few questions of endpoints uh, on the P3 surface. So let's say a basic is a P3 surface. Uh, so, um, how do you form the Hebrew scheme? Uh, you can think of it as um, single dimensional uh, subspaces of a P3 surface uh, of length uh, n. So basically, n points uh, on a K3 surface, and some of them are colliding. So they can collide in various directions. So um, that's how you can think about Hilbert schemes. Uh, but formally, uh, in another way of thinking it, uh, this is the minimal desingularization of the symmetry uh, end product uh, of a K3 surface. So the symmetric end product this is uh, just S cross S uh, n times. And then uh, you know that by the action of the symmetric uh, n group. Uh, so uh, every time uh, where two points collide, you get a singularity here. And then when we solve these singularities um, in a minimal way, you get the Hilbert scheme. So uh, this is a hyperbola manifold. Complex dimension uh, 2n. So uh, <laughs> this example is due to Bouville, and when n is equal to uh, 2, uh, this was discovered by Fujiki uh, slightly earlier. And then there is another uh, standard series of examples, uh, also due to Bouville. Um, so instead of uh, k surfaces, uh, you can take um, abelian surfaces. So, uh, in order to preserve the same dimension, uh, let's take uh, cube uh, n plus 1 of an abelian surface, uh, like a complex porous, uh, but projected one. So then, you have the same singularization map. This is called the Hilbert charm morphism. Uh, the symmetric end product of this uh, abelian surface. Um, so n plus 1, uh, because there were n plus 1 points. And then uh, another good thing about abelian surfaces is that they're also, they also have a group structure. So you can add the points. So uh, let's add these n plus 1 points and you get the summation map uh, to the abelian surface. Uh, so you have this uh, composition of maps, and uh, so what happens if you just consider uh, q n plus one of this abelian surface? Well, um, unfortunately, it is not simply connected, and there are too many of these uh, holomorphic uh, two-zero forms. So uh, just taking Hilbert's scheme wouldn't work. Uh, but in order to produce a hyperbola manifold, uh, you just take this distinguished point uh, zero in here, and you take the fiber of this uh, composition map uh, over the zero point. So this is uh, called the generalized humor surface. A and A. And uh, for K and A, um, this is generalized humor variety, and it has only one. Uh, non degenerate homomorphic to zero form, and it's also simply connected. So, um, this is the uh, hypergala manifold. So, you have, uh, so in each uh, complex dimension uh, 12, there exist uh, at least two examples. Uh, these two examples. So uh, the Hilbert scheme of endpoints 
uh, on the gateway surface, and then the generalized
classical uh, results. Uh, for example, um, there is this uh, general classical results of uh, Sullivan uh, about finiteness.
uh, then it will give you the same result for hyperscaling faults. So let's write this down. So if uh, H2 uh, with uh, integral coefficients uh, and uh, P1 tilde uh, are fixed.
then which isomorphism type, there are finitely many deformation types of uh, complex structures. So uh, even though uh, Sullivan's um, uh, theorem which uh, talks about isomorphism types, um, and uh, Kohler was a scientist theorem which uh, talks about deformation types, uh, these are different things, but because uh, for mathematical manifolds, uh, for each deformism type, there are only finitely many deformation types of complex structures. Uh, since we're just considering finiteness and not one-to-one -one correspondence, that's fine. Okay, so um, let's see. Yes? Uh, does this mean that we have some kind of uh, uh, the scheme of how was they being connected of having uh, finite and bonds? Yeah, uh, for cubic, uh, you mean for the cubic uh, I'm thinking about KT, KT is uh, uh, kind of clear, but the entire dimensions uh, uh, doesn't mean that if I think of uh, the space that parameterizes all those uh, uh, kind of manifolds, uh, doesn't mean it's connected? Uh, no, it can have different connected components. But we will, um, we're trying to prove that there are finitely many uh, connected components. Yeah, but uh, they're connected, I mean, they intersect the second point. So, um, uh, the model of space is connected. That's what I mean. So, it might have different components, but it's connected. You mean for Hilbert scheme? Or? Uh, the Hilbert scheme of, uh, if, you, if you fix some additional variance, uh, perhaps of uh, the hand that have manifolds, um, think you get the Hilbert, you can think of a Hilbert scheme and then uh, uh, this thing that uh, you can find too many information types, uh, does this mean it's connected or I'm misunderstanding? Yes. Uh, well, the Hilbert schemes are just one example, and yes, for them, um, this uh, uh, virtualized space is connected. So if you take uh, just this example of Hilbert schemes in a fixed dimension, uh, and then uh, deform uh, and their deformations, this is connected. Uh, but then, uh, if you take in the same dimension, uh, you take um, the generalized uh, varieties, uh, they have different weighting numbers. <laughs> so, um, there are different connected components of hypercalories. Yeah, but the ones coming from Hilbert schemes um, and their deformations is just one connected component. So um, if you have a class alpha 
Maxim Beach to NIC. Then uh, the top intersection alpha to the 20 uh, is some positive number uh, C uh, times uh, Q of alpha uh, to the N. So, so this is uh, like this. So H2, uh, which is an integral uh, real, uh, becomes a lattice uh, by uh, giving this uh, integral a uh, primitive intersection form. So you can think of it as the intersection form on a K3 surface. Uh, and then for K3 surface, um, this is topological because alpha squared is just 1 times Q of alpha, which is alpha squared. Um, that's for K3 circuits. But for general hyperkalians, um, this uh, positive constant is some fraction, uh, depending on the type of hyperkalian. So uh, here, C is called the Fujita constant. Uh, and it is a topological invariant. Uh, 
uh, additionally, prove that if uh, the base uh, B is smooth, then uh, B is a complex projective space of dimension uh, N. So uh, let us uh, consider smooth uh, uh, manifolds for uh, simplicity. So then B uh, becomes And uh, so, another thing uh, about uh, uh, the connection between vibrations and the field of mole form uh, is the following. So, uh, here on CPN, uh, you, you have plenty of uh, ample classes. For example, uh, let's take the hyperplane uh, class uh, and then pull it back uh, or align one associated, associated to a hyperplane class. Uh, pull it back to N, uh, and then uh, for L is the full back of some N O um, hyperplane class. Uh, then, uh, because of this um, very difficult relation about the world of all form, uh, you see that um, Q of the function class of this particular L, which is the fullback of an animal class, uh, must be zero. So um, every time you have a hyperteller um, Lagrangian vibration like this, uh, you get this uh, special uh, class um, L, uh, whose uh, normal form is zero. And, uh, this is kind of a side note, but um, the converse is the converse is also true. Uh, the converse is the S Y Z conjecture uh, in hypergeometric geometry. Uh, if you have such a special class, let's say it's a net class with um, hmm. will be more form of zero, then this gives you the Lagrangian vibration uh, from which uh, L uh, is some, somehow. Uh, looks like uh, the full back of an ample uh, class. And uh, this uh, S1Z conjecture uh, is already uh, improved for all of the known examples of uh, hyperkeller manifolds. Uh, and it's uh, open for uh, all the other uh, unknown examples. Uh, so uh, that's very interesting. And uh, maybe we can remember. So if you have a large integration, then you get this special class with will of the mode form um, zero. Uh, how did we get that the top self intersection of L is zero? Uh, ah, that's uh, let me write this one. Uh, so uh, let's say uh, L. So then uh, L to the uh, twin is just um, by a uh, star of each to the twin. Uh, but uh, it means so it's a full break of H to the twin. And because H is a class on uh, CPM which is n dimensional, then H uh, n plus 1, n plus 2, uh, all of the above are zero. So that's uh, zero. And because uh, this Finds Q of L to the N, and then this must be zero. Okay, so uh, let's see. Ah, I have a few more minutes. So uh, let me just um, mention a generalization of a quick break squeeze up. So um, I uh, spend so much time uh, talking about hyperkellers and general properties that um, <laughs> I am running out of time. Okay, so uh, first uh, let me uh, generalize 
slightly um, this uh, theorem of color and muscle cycle. Uh, this generalization is beautiful from Swan Charles. And uh, it is uh, the following. Generalized it in 2014. So uh, fix the following um, data. So n and r are positive uh, integers. Uh, then, um, so uh, he did it in very algebraic way. So let me say how he did it, and then I shall say um, what it means in other words. So there exists. Uh, a scheme uh, is a finite type uh, over the complex numbers uh, in a projective morphism Thank you. 
sorry you know, for the interruption. I, I just want to ask uh, one small question related to this color not to surface here. <laughs> so here if instead of, uh, of L and O, uh, you consider L big, but instead of looking at the top of top self-intersection number, you look at the volume of L. Mm -hmm. Do you get uh, the same result? Is it is it more if you can replace sample? And the top, well, if you can relax and go to a line bundle, and uh, instead of top self intersection number, you just take the volume of that, which well, in the know. case of Pentel coincides with the top self intersection. Yes. Do you I get think primary so. main information types? So the problem is to go with, um, uh, let's see. Uh, there is the hill principle of uh, L where um, uh, with L to the D and this intersection you get um, the first two coefficients. And then for Hilbert polynomials uh, of uh, uh, certain um, projected main balls, uh, if you transmit the first two coefficients, then the whole uh, Hilbert polynomial is predetermined. And that's how they go the finalness. So that's how the proof went. Um, so if you just fix uh, the volume, I'm not sure if you're going to if this will fix you the first two coefficients, but one can check. Um, and then if it fixes the first two coefficients of the Hilbert polynomial, then you get finiteness uh, just because the whole uh, Hilbert polynomial becomes predetermined. Um, that's how. Maybe. Uh, maybe um, I'll just uh, uh, say the very um, the very basic idea of this uh, theorem. Uh, how to prove it? Uh, but uh, I'll be uh, I'll take like two minutes. Just take 
uh, all of the positive QMWs uh, takes uh, the ones with minimal intersection and then you modify them by some linear combination uh, with uh, this vector B, uh, of course, square is zero. So, after you do some uh, lattice theory, uh, you can uh, adjust the solved Q of W is positive because it's positive uh, and it's less ratio than two times the absolute value of the discrete of this whole form Q. So then, um, you're in the setting of Charles theorem where um, instead of uh, getting an ample line bundle, you got some uh, line bundle uh, <coughs> is of the positive line bundle uh, and uh, such that, uh, well, uh, for a child's theorem this uh, is zero, so there is only the bump here, but then the top degree uh, is uh, finite. So uh, then you basically uh, bound uh, W uh, to the twin because uh, by Fujiki's formula, this is C times Q of W to W uh, to the N. And that's the ratio that is positive constant C, which uh, is fixed. And then um, two times um, <coughs> the discriminant by absolute value uh, to the power uh, N. So then we also bound this. Uh, and then you get this uh, finance theorem. So there is a lot of lattice theory going on behind this, and the properties of the mobile model form. Uh, but more to <coughs> this lattice theory, uh, that's the main idea. Uh, that's how you found the, the top intersection of W. Uh, and, <coughs> uh, and then instead of uh, applying to Lerman's cycle, you apply Ch Francois Charles uh, theorem. So well, that's the basic uh, idea. <laughs> and since I'm out of time, uh, I'll stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mila. Thanks. So, are there some additional questions? Because we have a lot yet. The Huber scheme is a resolution of singularity of type A. Do you get something interesting for types D and D? Um, uh, I don't think uh, I get anything uh, as interesting no, as the Hilbert scheme. Yeah. No. Uh, there is actually some <laughs> very uh, interesting um, work by Kalevin and Len, uh, in which uh, they say that uh, if you have uh, other modular spaces of semi-stable uh, semi sheets, um, um, not of the type that already um, did, but any other type, you cannot get a hypercaler. So it's a general theorem by Kalevin and Len. Okay. okay. This polynomial that appears in, in the pre-vertex result are there any properties of this polynomial as a polynomial? So the cases that would occur, because I would suppose that not every polynomial would occur. Yes, that's right. So that's why it says it moves finitely many, because not every polynomial can occur uh, as this polynomial. There are some properties, um, there are some rosansky witten invariants where um, <coughs> This polynomial satisfies some uh, equalities uh, having to do with uh, eight hat genus. So um, there are some further restrictions and inequalities that you get um, uh, with this polynomial. And uh, a lot of them were done in uh, Simon's thesis uh, when teaching was his advisor. I guess a criterion then for if one could classify the polynomials that would occur, then this would be some, this would have a consequence that, that in every dimension there would be finite dimension and a hyper element. Uh, 
ideas, if you classify the polynomials, but that's a very hard thing to do. Right. Yes. Do you have some other questions? Well, not I, I want to continue my questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's under the addition of hypothesis that Km is zero. So that this intersection yes. is zero. Yes. Yeah. So you don't have in this case a Hilbert polynomial, right? That's when L is not empty. Yeah. Uh, you, the volume function is not a, yeah, it's not a polynomial, it's more complicated. The H0 oh, uh, I the twist. So I, I wonder, of course you need this additional hypothesis that this second term vanishes. But I wonder if still the number of information types is high. Do you know the results of this form? Or? Um, no, the no. only one I know is by Francois. By Francois, okay. okay. So, no more questions? Okay, let's take the Ludmilla. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay.